Now, I have a lot of ground to cover, and I don't know if I'm going to be able to do the subject justice, but I'm going to try to uh, tell you from a biblical perspective who the Antichrist is. And I, I keep telling you that it's Jesuit Zach Knight. Um, regarding Zach Knight, Knight's claims at crazygale.com that he's made love to a hundred women, that he makes love to a hundred women every day. I really could care less. Maybe it's true. Maybe it's not. I don't know. He claims that I believe it. I, I really don't know if it's true or not. Uh, knowing him is possible, but you know, it's not a, the Bible says that the Antichrist is going to be a vile person. Um, it's in Daniel 11. Um, he's called a vile person. So that would describe Zack Knight to a T. So it would make sense. Um, As far as my attitude towards my sex life, I've only had sex with one man my entire life, and that was my ex-husband. I have had brain-to-brain -brain sex with about six or seven. I am very, my standards for sex are very high. Can you imagine how difficult it must have been for me in 1991 and 92 to turn down Brent Spiner when I was married to a man who was emotionally abusive towards me? And Brent Spiner was like my dream man. There's only one reason I turned him down in 91. It's because I love the Lord Jesus and I wanted to honor him. So my sexual standards are very high. And I do not become involved with a man with brain-to-brain -brain sex or physical sex unless I feel there is no treachery involved. Because God's standard of judgment in judging sexual sins is whether or not there's treachery. Uh, if you really want to know how I feel about sexual sins, you need to go to my... Um, uh, so, so some other videos that I've already made. One entitled King David Woman's Millennial Marriage to Brent Spiner. Another one entitled How Widower Vlad Vladimir Putin Fell in Love with Gail Cord in 2001. And then listen to the one entitled Treachery in Sex, How God Judges Sexual Sins. And you'll pretty much know how I stand on sexual stuff. Uh, Zach Knight has um, put a, a whole bunch of new stuff up at his web website, crazygale.com. And it's just too much crap to deal with here. All I can say is, if you want to know what I really believe, um, just listen to those three videos. Um, we started a court case against the Jesuits. I owe 7,500 in credit card debt on five different credit cards. I just paid one off. And... Um, I have invited my men to take the Jesuits to court, and I know my men want to pay off. They've tried to give me my writing money from my novel Silver Skies in the past, and the Jesuits keep blowing up the trucks that bring the money to the bank, or they, um, or they, or they bribe or use extortion on the publisher so that the publisher doesn't give me my money, or they cause an explosion at the publisher's office, or they've done all sorts of stuff. My men have tried time and time again to give me money, but because I am the number one target of the Jesuit order, which they admit at their website, crazygale.com, they make sure that I stay in poverty so that I don't have any more power than I, or influence than I already have. Though when Jesus wants me to have more money, I'll get it. So I'll just leave that in his hands. He told me to make videos at least once a week, so I'm continuing here. Um, regarding the email that got published that I talked about in my last video, I found out from Brent Spiner that the way the Jesuits got that private email of mine, which I'd only sent to Brent and that I didn't publish anywhere, was that Brent was using it in his court case against the Jesuits. And apparently, once any of my emails has been introduced as evidence in the, in the court case, it becomes public knowledge, and therefore it's okay for them to publish it. So that's what they're doing. They're taking the emails, which Brent has submitted as evidence in court, and they're publishing that at their site, Crazy Get Wiki. So that's where they got it. Uh, in fact, Brent and my men are still taking the Jesuits to court because we started a new case in which we are accusing the Jesuits of money laundering charges and that they've stolen the writing money that rightly belongs to me, and they're trying to frame it on my men. This is nothing new. They've been doing this for years. So, and I told them, I want you to. I says, I'm going to give you information on how you can pay off the five credit cards that I, you know, that I owe money to. And uh, let's, uh, let's make this a public trial in the Gabriel Chana Fox News Channel. And let's see uh, 
let's let the birdie fly, man. I, I always said I already know what's going to happen. So I made all my monthly payments this month on those cards because I already know what's going to happen. So Jesuits are going to try to come up with some way to stop you from paying off my cards. And, but I want the whole world to see them do it. And so I'll let you know what happens. Right, right now, the, my men have taken the Jesuits to court and they're trying to pay off my cards. And I'm certain the Jesuits have already caused some complications. They always do. Between blowing up the credit card company or using extortion or bribery on the people there, they, I mean, the, they are determined that I don't get any money. My, my novel, Silver Skies, has already been made into a Steven Spielberg movie starring Matthew McConaughey. But the Jesuits uh, uh, keep, uh, they either threaten to kill somebody or they, or they do kill somebody or they blow up trucks or blow up the bank or whatever. And I never get the money. So one way or the other, it never gets to me. So I know what to expect, but I want the world to see them in, in action because I'm getting sick and tired of everybody accusing my men of not being who they are and of, um, you know, or if they are who they are, they're claiming that they're stealing my money and using money laundering tactics and trying to make it look like the Jesuits are doing it. So anyways, that trial's going on right now and I'll let you know as it proceeds what how it's going. My Jesuit, uh, excuse me, my men have taken the Jesuit order to court for money laundering charges because they've stolen my writing money and other monies that belong to me Hey, I am the great niece of Howard Hughes, and I've had to work as a, you know, it's like his jobs like cashier, and even though I've written a brilliant novel, and of course the Jesuits have hired all their critiquers to go say all sorts of nonsense about it, people who haven't even read the book and admit it. So, uh, anyways, um, I'm the Zechariah 915 woman, so I'm going to be Satan's number one target, and I am. And Satan's church is the Roman Catholic Church. Um, say, you know, uh, I'm going to show you, teach you a little bit about the Antichrist, and it might help explain uh, some things. Most people are woefully ignorant about the Bible and about who the Antichrist is. Um, oh, I was got thinking, you know. You know, have you ever wondered why those 144,000 Jewish men that are going to be the God's true servants during the tribulation, why they're virgins? Have you ever thought about that? I have some speculation on this. I think the reason that they are going to be virgins is because the Antichrist, Zach Knight, specializes in discrediting God's ser uh, servants through their sexual life, like he's doing with me and my men. And... These virgins, when they show up during the tribulation, they're, they're going to know all about me and my men, Brent Spiner. Because we're going to be well known to all the tribulation saints. The Lord Jesus already told me. All of my videos are going to go underground, and they're going to be viewing them for encouragement. So they're going to know all about us. And these 144,000 Jewish virgin men are going to realize, I believe that the Zach Knight is going to be partially successful in discrediting me and my men. And this is why he's going to get such a following in the tribulation. He's going to be able to point to inconsistencies or what he considers sins in my sexual life or like in my men's sexual life to draw away followers from us to get them to follow him. And he's already doing it. For instance, one of his criticisms of me has been this. Well, Gail claimed to be Jesus Christ follower. but And she says that that sex is marriage and she's being loyal to God's laws about marriage and sex because she's only, you know. She says, well, how do you explain the fact, Gail, that most of your men are not virgins when you got them? So how do you explain that you're not breaking up any marriage there when you acquire like Brent Spiner or Vladimir Putin when they were more than likely not virgins when you got them, Gail? This is what I'm talking about. Um, okay, let's just put it this way. There are three grounds for a divorce and a remarriage. There's death, desertion, and adultery. I explained this in my other video entitled um, Treachery and Sex, How God Judges Sexual Sins. When Brent Spiner came in my life, the woman that he was involved with before had already gone to bed with other men. Therefore, she had deserted him, so he was free to go to me. Okay, 
How's that for an answer? <laughs> or the women. Anytime you have sex with somebody, willingly and knowingly, it's marriage because sex is, if it's a willing and knowing and it's not rape. Okay? So let's say one of my men had willing and knowing sex. Well, let's take Matthew McConaughey with Penelope Cruz, you know. Um, say, how do you explain away that with your high sexual standards? Well, to be honest with you, I trust my men and they know what my sexual standards are. My number one criteria when I get involved with a man with brain to brain sex is that there is no treachery there because that's how God judges sexual sins. You need to listen to my video on um, treachery and sex, how God judges sexual sins. Um, from what I understand, these women that my men were involved with before, they either deserted the guy. In other words, if Penelope and Matthew broke up, apparently it was mutual on both sides, and it's what they both wanted to do. So it was, and so she just left and went on, and she probably had, she's had other men besides Matthew. Once she has another man besides Matthew, he is no longer bound to her in marriage. You see what I'm saying? So I guess you could say he had a divorce. <laughs> and so that left him open for me. Um, and the same with uh, Brent Spiner. Any other woman he, woman he was involved with before he got involved with me, if that woman got involved with another man after him, he's free. That's once one of the grounds for remarriage is adultery. Adultery means having sex with someone beside your sex partner, right? Okay. So that answers that one, Zach Knight. Besides, who's Zach Knight to preach to me, man? I do believe he probably does have sex with a bunch of women every day. So he's uh, he's committing adultery a hundred times over every day. and He's going to point his satanic evil finger at me, accusing me of being bad about sex. I mean, please spare me. <laughs> I don't need the devil giving me advice about how to be true to Jesus Christ, okay? And I, I do believe Zach Knight is the devil, so, so that's it. My number one criteria when I decide whether I'm going to get involved with a man is if there's if I'm committing anything treacherous in the sexual area. If it's not treacherous, then I'm free. As far as Camila Alves, she committed treachery. She, uh, the Jesuits, whenever they commit sex they're, sex, they're always treacherous. They're always hurting an innocent person, or they're killing somebody, or they're you, or they're discrediting a good person's reputation. So. Um, as far as I know, all of my men, when they got involved with me, they had scriptural grounds for divorce from their previous spouse. In Hugh Jackman's case, his wife died. So he was free to be with me. Matthew McConaughey, I believe desertion was the reason he was free to be with me. Same with Brent Spiner. Gerard Butler, uh, I haven't really talked to him too much about his previous women, but I don't think he's... Um, I don't think he really was involved with any woman when he got involved with me. Um, his last girlfriend might have been several years earlier. I don't know, but I'm certain that woman went on and had sex with other men. Once their previous lover has gone on and had sex with another man, that man's free. He's not bound to her because that's that broke the marriage relationship right there. You see what I'm saying? So if you're going to point your finger and say, yeah, yeah, they had sex with other women besides you, then the next question is, did that other woman already have sex with another man besides my man? Because if he has, he's already broken the marriage with, with him, and that man's free to go to a new woman. You see? You say, well, what about you? You know, to be honest with you, I don't completely understand why God approves of me having a pro about 40 men on my marriage list. And it goes, kind of goes up and down. It stays at around 40. And I think that's why the Lord used uh, uh, the number 40 to represent the men on my marriage list in 1 Samuel 17, 40. I'm not completely sure what God's rules are in, when we're under Jewish law. Okay? I really don't completely understand it. But I do know this, that Jesus Christ, when he talks to me, through Brent Spiner via Skype, has he actually encourages me to make brain-to-brain -brain loving with my men. And the others besides Brent Spiner. I mean, he has, there have been times when he's told me, Gail, I think you ought to make some brain-to-brain -brain loving with Terrence Jenkins. See, he took, yeah. 
He said, why do you think he said that? I don't know. Maybe he knew. I don't know. And then the trance was going, really? It's like, Jesus said that. And then he, um, um, he encourages me mostly to have it with Brent. But one time we were discussing medicine and my sleep. And you know what Jesus said? He said, Gail, I can tell you what would be your best sedative. The best? He said, if you ever have trouble sleeping, Gail, the best thing you can do is have brain-to-brain -brain loving with Brent Spiner. You may say, well, how does he feel about you having brain-to-brain -brain loving with him? No, 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 no. Oh, this is another area I've got to address. Um, Zach Knight has me portrayed as this woman who thinks that I'm, that I, that I dream about making love to Jesus every day. I most certainly do not. This is not what the Lord Jesus Christ wants. This is not how the Lord Jesus Christ wants me to see him. Jesus Christ has specifically told me not to think of him as a lover. We say, well, what's this about him? Uh, um, about him giving you his semen in the millennium? That seems like sort of contradictory. I know, we, we thought so too. So we asked Jesus about this. Like, Jesus, what is this? You're telling me not to think of you as a lover, and yet you tell me that you're going to give me your semen in the millennium? What's that supposed to mean? How do I get your semen unless we're lovers? And Jesus said, I need to explain this to you, Gail. He said, the way it works is this. He said, during the millennium, he said, I'm going to, your husband is going to be Brent Spiner, not me. He says, I can't marry you, Gail, because I'm God and because I'm married to the church. He said, but, and so me and me and Brent and Trans were, but, but, what do you mean, but, Lord? I mean, we don't get it. Trans said, I don't get it, Jesus. How can she get your semen unless you are her lover? He says, I'm going to explain this to you, Gail. He said, the way it works is this. He said, during the, when I marry you to Brent Spiner, apparently it's going to be a very public, really big deal marriage ceremony in the millennium. I mean, it's going to be a really big deal, this marriage of myself to Brent Spiner. He said, I'm going to give you my semen as a wedding gift. I said, well, Lord, what do you have to do that for? He said, I said, what's so special about your semen? He says, oh, Gail, he says, my semen is very special. <laughs> he said, and I, now that I think about it, this is quite an honor. And I, I've been de debating this in my mind, like, why would you, so Jesus, why would you even bother to do this? He didn't answer that question. Apparently, this is not something he wants to go into. Maybe it's because he's afraid if he does that it's going to encourage me to make be tricked by Zack Knight. But I have some theories, which I'm going to go into. Jesus loves me deeply, just like he loves all of his children. But I think he has a special love for me um, because I'm going to play a significant role in nurturing the tribulation saints and in, and in weakening the Antichrist. You must realize this. Put yourself in God's shoes. It's kind of hard for us finite humans to think like God, but... Okay, who is the arch enemy of God and Jesus Christ? It's Satan, right? Okay, well, you pretty much know how Jesus feels about Satan, okay? We know he can't stand him. Satan is God's arch enemy. Okay, and here comes this woman along me, the King David woman, the Zechariah 915 woman. And you know what my life's obsession is? My life's obsession is to weaken Satan. Everything I do, even making love to my men, and making these videos, uh, the, every decision I make, I have one goal in mind, and that is to weaken Satan and strengthen the cause of Jesus Christ. That is my, I'm willing to die over this. Do you think that God would not notice my attitude? That I feel towards Satan exactly like he does? You see, he, I'm the King David woman. You know how the Lord described David? He was a man after God's own heart. And Jesus Christ has told me himself. He said, Gail, you're just like David. He, in fact, he, he goes out of the way. He says, you're just like young David. He, he, he wants to emphasize this because David in his later years sinned with Bathsheba. So he's not, he's not comparing me to that, that David. He always says, Gail, you're just like young David. He said that to me once. I said, oh, Lord, that is such an honor. So you're letting me know that I'm like David was before he committed adultery. I said, Gail, that's right, Gail. 
And apparently because I am like young David, and because I'm a woman after God's own heart, he has special affection for me. And um, I have made a lot of sacrifices for him already. I turned back in 91. I turned down Brent Spiner to stay in with my emotionally abusive husband, who later, out turned, later turned out to be a Jesuit. And um, I always choose his will over money. I am um, right now, even now, as I look for work, I have had some. I try to be very careful to only choose a line of work where I feel I can honor my Lord Jesus Christ. And if I sense that by taking the job, it would bring dishonor to him, I won't take it. And for instance, I, I don't I never do the lottery. I never uh, try to get winnings for any prize. Because I'm afraid that if I win a whole bunch of money, that the devil can use it to discredit my men. Because then they're going to... They say, what do you mean? Well, I'm afraid that the source of the money will turn out to be criminal. And then the, the Jesuits will try to asso associate me with that source. So therefore, I never, ever try to win any prizes. I just want to make sure that my life is above board. Because I... I know that I am like the chief leader in on Jesus' side against the Antichrist. And I try not to discredit my testimony in any way that would give the devil ammunition against my Lord. Jesus is putting a lot of faith in me right now. He's asking me to make videos for him. And so I just go out of my way to try, try as much as I can not to discredit his great name by my life. And already, I mean, already the Antichrist has um, discredited me somewhat. Like I made a boo-boo when I confused him with Jesus Christ. The only time, let me say this, the only time that I've ever dreamed of making love to Jesus my entire life was, I got to admit what happened, when he, when he showed up at Church of Gale on February the 14th, 2011, I have to admit, I did find Jesus attractive. He, the way he came across, see, I, the only experience I'd had with him before then was just from reading the Bible and from, um, and from my prayer life. And then he always came across to me as, you know, the almighty, holy God who, who was a great, loving, I, I think I saw him accurately. But the thing is, when he showed up at Church of Gale, on February 14, 2011, and he spoke to me. He was so down to earth. And how do I say this? He had... He was attractive to me. Because let me tell you what... My, the main things that I look for in a man, okay? I like manliness. And boy, was he macho. The way he beat up Zack Knight and threw lightning bolts at Zack Knight's balls. I thought, man, this guy, this Jesus is macho, man. I like this man. And then he was highly intelligent. Of course, who's going to be smarter than God? And so, and I, all of my men are highly intelligent. I, I, I can't find a man attractive if I think he's a dodo bird. So he was macho, highly intelligent. I actually made a list of what I find attractive in a man. And he was... Um, Passionate. Those are the three top things I look for in a man. High intelligence, manliness, passion. See, how do you know he was passionate? Oh, I could tell he was passionate. There's nothing gray about Jesus. He's a black or white man. I mean, he, he, he's a, it's like, <laughs> Jesus knew. Anyways, he just, the way he came across, and I even loved his sense of humor. I mean, I've always known God had a sense of humor. You can, you can go read what he was like if you could go to my website and click on that link called uh, Zach Knight is the Antichrist and Jesus tells us he's the Antichrist. It's right there at my, just about the top of all my web pages. So I was just, and he was so down to earth with me, but <laughs> I think he allowed me to, to be deceived by Zach Knight so that I can warn others not to be deceived by him. Zach Knight is Satan incarnate now. The devil's not stupid. 
he analyzed what it was that I found attractive in Jesus Christ, and he tried to to bring, imitate those qualities as he approached me brain to brain. So after, right after Jesus appeared, he asked me to make a video right away about what happened. But I kind of delayed because Zach Knight started talking to me brain to brain and saying, oh, Jesus wants you to delay, blah, blah, blah. And he started, and Zach Knight started saying, Jesus wants to make love to you, Gail. Now, this is the only time in my entire life that I've ever thought of Jesus in a sexual context. Most of my life, I, I would have felt it was blasphemy to think of him that way. And that, that, that Zach Knight was so clever. He knew that I had just been introduced to Jesus in a format that I was not familiar with. And that, and that I found Jesus attractive, and he decided to play on it. So he, he approached me brain to brain and claimed that he was Jesus Christ. And he tried to come across to me with the same qualities, the manliness, the, uh, the passion, the high intelligence that Jesus himself possesses. The only quality he lacked was holiness. <laughs> Zach Knight can't be holy, he's the devil. But he, he emulated very well those other qualities of Jesus, and he fooled me. So he, he played on with his mind-reading technology. He was aware that I found Jesus attractive from that February 14th encounter, and he played on it, and he successfully seduced me brain to brain. And he made love to me. Let me say, what was he like as a lover? To be honest with you, I was having a hard time getting, I mean, he was, he did a good imitation, but I was having a little bit of trouble getting, how do I say, um, climaxing with him. <laughs> so, Jesus later, when he, when he, um, I said, then why did you do what you say? Well, I thought that Jesus wanted it because he, because he, had, he said he, he, this is when Jesus told me he was going to give me his semen. If Jesus didn't tell me that, I probably wouldn't have fallen for this. So Zach and I lied to me and said, guess what, Gail? Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to protect you from getting um, impregnated by Zach Knight. He was posing by making you pregnant. And therefore, if you're pregnant, you can't get pregnant. Right. And then I'm going to keep that pregnancy on hold until the millennium. So I thought that's what he was doing. He was trying to protect me from Zach Knight. So I went along with it. And. But. Strange things were happening with my men, and it seemed like what this brain-to-brain -brain Jesus lover was telling me, what my men were telling me, was two different things. So I wasn't sure what was going on. Well, Jesus showed up, and he said, he, he told Brenton Torrance, he says, I need to talk to Gail. So he said, first thing he said, Gail, he said, I want you to understand, I will never, ever use the brain-to-brain -brain servers or computers or electricity to talk to you. Okay, you understand that? He said, first of all, I need to let you make you aware that Zach Knight has impregnated all of your eggs and that he has been posing as me. And he said, I'm very angry about this, Gail. I'm very, very angry. He says, I am going to have a talk, a serious talk with the, with Satan and Zach Knight. And they are not to approach you anymore. I'm going to uh, go approach them with a, what do you call it, a non-interference agreement. That is a he, says, I, he said, the reason Zach Knight did this is because I went out of my way to talk to you. So he thought he had the right to be more bold to approach you, too. He said, I'm very, very angry. Another reason Zach Knight tricked me is because I didn't realize at that time that Zach Knight had broken into our brain-to-brain -brain servers. He'd never done that before. So that's where my guard was down. I presumed it was Jesus because that's who he claimed he was. So... That's the only time in my entire life that I've ever thought of Jesus as a lover, okay? So don't believe this Zach Knight crap that I am that I long to make love to Jesus. I'm, I'm completely over that now. Because, because after Jesus had that long talk to me, I realized that I hurt him deeply by being deceived by Zach Knight. Because, because he worried about me. Um, Jesus said, Gail, please. He says, I'm saying this out of concern for you. I want you to understand, I will never, ever use the brain-to-brain -brain servers to talk to you. And he had to meet with me several times to, to try, get me to straighten me out so I wouldn't be deceived with Zach Knight. Because Zach Knight did a pretty good imitation of Jesus. The only part he missed was he's not holy. But, um, but he tried to do a good imitation of that, too. He was... 
coming across to me like, oh, Gail, my heart is just broken that I'm going to have to put the world through the great tribulation. This is how he came across to me. Pretty good fake. He said, it just breaks my heart. I wish I didn't have to do this, Gail. And I said, I told Jesus about this. You know, that's what he told me, Jesus. He said, yeah, yeah. He he took a truth, which is how sorry, how bad I feel that I'm going to have to put the world through the great tribulation. He worked on that to trick you, Gail. He's a, I will say one thing for him. He's a pretty good fake. <laughs> and he said, but he said, Gail, that isn't me. I said, Jesus, how did you feel while you watched in heaven while the Zack Knight was making love to me? And Jesus said, I just shook my head and said, I just said, oh, that Zack Knight, man. What a sorry imitation he is of me. Because if I was a lover, I'd be a lot better than that. That's what Jesus told me. <laughs> and so we asked Jesus, Jesus, why did you say you're going to give me your semen? He said, well, actually, I'm going to do it through a... Uh, Brent Spiner. Okay, I'm gonna now let's get back to the original topic. Why did Brent Jesus say he's gonna give me a semen? I think it's because he just deeply appreciates. I think I've noticed something about God. He is very appreciative when you do anything for him. Unlike us humans. You do anything for Jesus, he just appreciates it from the depth of his soul. Jesus cannot be my husband. He is married to the church, okay? And I understand that, and I respect that. However, he appreciates so much my hard work for him, and he's already told me many times that I work very hard for him, and the role that I'm going to play in bringing tribulation saints to him. And it is true. It just breaks his heart that he's got to put the world through the great tribulation. Therefore, because he deeply appreciates... <laughs> The fact, the role that I'm going to play in bringing tribulation saints to him and the sacrifices I'm making in this present life so that I can be a good example to the tribulation saints. And I am, like right now, I'm unemployed. You know why I'm unemployed, basically? Because I've stood up for Jesus, that's why. And that's all I'm going to say in the matter, but that's it. But Jesus knows it. And um, I have made many decisions in my life that have hurt me financially. But I did it because it was the right thing to do. And not only hurt me financially, but it hurt me in other areas. Like when I, when I turned down Brent Spiner in 1991, I felt like Abraham must have felt when he sacrificed Isaac on the altar. You think Jesus overlooks stuff like that? You think he takes that for granted? I think that's why I'm going to be getting his semen in the millennium. And right now, from what I understand, every single one of my videos is going to go underground as a DVD and it's going to nurture tribulation saints. If you've seen the movies about the tribulation that I uh, encourage you to watch called A Thief in the Night, A Dist Thief in the Night, A Distant Thunder, um, The Mark of the Beast, um, the other one is called A Prodigal Planet, you're going to get an idea how horrible the tribulation period is going to be. Do you think Jesus enjoys making the world suffer like this? And the sufferings, but yet he has to do it because he's got to purge the sin. He's got to deal with the sin problem. So sin and evil has to be fully dealt with. And he does that during the tribulation. It's all part of his plan so that love and righteousness and truth can reign supreme over the universe. The only way love and righteousness and truth can reign supreme is that he's got to purge out the evil and the sin and the and the devil and his followers, and he'll be doing that during the tribulation. So it's going to be a terrible, it's going to be like the climax of the ages, this tribulation period. See, God's, uh, God's story with man, his God's love story with man is going to climax in the tribulation. It's kind of like, you know, when you watch a movie and the climax is when good and evil come to the head and they're at each other and they're and one's getting on top of the other and you get to see who's going to win and come out. on The tribulation's like the climax of God's plan for the ages. So everything's going to come to the head. All of the powers of evil are going to be up against all of the powers of God. And they're going to go like this during the tribulation. And it's going to be one wild, crazy ride. And the inhabitants on earth are going to be like on a big roller coaster, whichever side they're on. Whether it's on God's side or the devil's side, it's going to be a big roller coaster. Earthquakes, mountains falling into the ocean, 
water, literally turning the oceans, turning to blood. People are not going to be able to find water. They're going to turn on their faucet and blood's going to come out. Um, they're going to be the miraculous healings and everything. And if God's going to, it's going to be so bad for the nation of Israel. The only way they're going to survive is God's going to have to send down manna from heaven to feed them. Just like he did in Exodus. It's going to be a repeat of that. And like all those plagues that, that, were, that fell on Pharaoh, that's going to happen too. Let me tell you a little bit about the Antichrist, okay? I'm trying to help Jesus out here. which is This is why I think Jesus is going to give me a semen, because I am helping him out. I'm educating the world about the Antichrist. This means there will be le he's going to get less followers because of me. Hallelujah. Let me tell you a little bit more about him. You might say, how do you know Zach Knight's the Antichrist? Well, let me just show you something really interesting. And I've mentioned this before. But um, I'm going to go into it again. Um, oh, man, I lost it, Lord. Dicaris file die. You say, how do you know the Antichrist is going to be a Roman Catholic Pope? Okay? Did you know that all of the, um, that Hitler's number was 555? Um, I think before him we had, um, so the next worldwide dictator is going to be a 666. That's going to be Zack Knight. But every single one of the worldwide dictators whose, whose numberings match 444, 333, 222, 111, they were all connected to Rome in one way or the other. And, um, It's today everybody has a number. Everybody's got a telephone number, social security number, a car license number, lottery numbers, the popes are numbered. And today we're in the, we live in the age where the numbers are everywhere. So you know we're getting close to the tribulation period. It wasn't like this like in the 1800s and 1700s. Um, here is wisdom. Let him that hath understanding count the number of the beast, for it is the number of a man, and his number is 603 score and 6. I mean, 666 is everywhere. You look at the barcodes. 6 on each side, 6 in the middle. The Israeli flag, the Star of David, that's a satanic symbol. It's 666. There's a, there are like 6 triangles, and there are 6 points, and um, 6 something else. There's 6 in there 3 times. 666, 3 times in the Israeli, the Star of David. Um, and the reason for that is because when the Antichrist comes to power, the first three and a half years, he's going to be friends with Israel. And Israel's going to make a deal with Satan incarnate. So and then, he'll, then he's going to break his covenant with them and go after him and kill him worse than anybody that ever killed him in history. Um, there's, this is, I can't do this subject justice, but I, let me just hit on one thing, okay? Vicaris Fili Die. It is Latin. Did you know that this little inscription was born faithfully on the forehead of many popes down through the centuries? Then, late in the 19th century, the College of Cardinals decided that it should be shelved as quickly as possible. There was an ominous rumbling of premillennialism in the background. Some fanatical man named Moody and some Baptist named Spurgeon and a converted priest named Cronin had gotten together with the brethren and some more things. Quickly, quickly, now get it out of sight and tell our people that we never did wear such a thing. The Protestants are slandering us. You may say, why did you say this? Vicaribs, V-I-C-A-R-I-B-S-F-I-L-I-I-D-E-I. -I -I -E -I. That's in Roman numerals. It is Latin. What's the language of the Roman Catholic Church, Latin? Okay, this is what they wore on their um, forehead, on their crown, as Pope. For years, it has a 500, a 100, two fives, a 50, and six I's in it. V equals 5, D equals 500, C equals 100, L equals 50, and I equals 1. The E, A, R, S, and F are not Roman numerals. Every letter in Vicaris Filet Die, which the Roman Catholic popes wore for centuries, Every letter in it that is a numeral adds up to exactly 666. Six, six. Strike out the non-numerals and all that is left is 666. Six, six. 
now. How long are people going to face these multiplied coincidences and go on shutting their eyes and saying, well, I don't believe in criticizing folks' religion? Vicaris fili dei, translated, means faithful vicar of God or vicarious substitute, son of God or shepherd, son of God. Okay, there's no need for a priest to snort and bellow about it and try to deny it. For the titles already ascribed to Mary and the Pope far exceed this inscription. What on earth is so terrible about vicarious son of God when the man wearing it has already demanded to be called Holy Father? The reason for ditching the inscription was not that it, was, that it called the Father something he was not. The reason was that too many Protestants were obeying Revelation 13.18 and were counting the number of the man. Premillennialism, that's the teaching that the, the rapture happens or the taking out of the church happens uh, before a seven-year tribulation, and that at the end of the seven-year tri seven tribulation is the second coming of Jesus Christ, and then there's a thousand-year reign of Christ. That's what premillennialism is, okay? That's what I am, and that's the biblical position. Premillennialism brings with it the teaching of the seven-year tribulation with the devil's Christ seated in the rebuilt temple at Jerusalem. That's where Zach Knight's going to be. He's going to take over the temple at Jerusalem and claim to be Jesus. No wonder they started counting. Now, the summation of the evidence is that whatever the 666 stands for, it points most certainly, without any deviation, directly to Rome. Rome and Jerusalem, then, become the focal points of world history. Okay. So... Further, it's said that when he appears, he will appear at the gates of Rome. This is in um in their in this uh, unbelieving Judaism's mystic Bible. So um <laughs> the Jews are going to be tricked. For the first three and a half years, they're going to make a deal with Satan incarnate, which might explain why the Star of David is a satanic symbol. You say, well, you you display that on your uh, website to just to show your support for Israel. Well, it's on the Israeli flag, and that's what I use to, everybody knows what it stands for, so I use that. But the Star of David is actually a satanic symbol. It's 666. Uh, you ought to listen to Dr. Ruckman's uh, message this week at a Sunday school hour. You, if you go to my, uh, uh, he teaches about that. Anyways, like I said, I can't do this subject justice. The course of the Antichrist in the end time is clear. It's clear that he's going to invade Palestine, Daniel 11, and enter Jerusalem, Revelation 11, and defile the temple. Oh, the Jesuit loves to defile. That's why he made love to me and impregnated all my eggs. He's a defiler. He's a vulgar man. Daniel 11. Daniel 11 des describe him as, describes him as vile. Where is that, Lord? Um, it says, um... He's vile. It's in Daniel 11 somewhere. I can't remember the verse. I'm bad with verses. I'm, though, even though I've read the Bible many times, I've got a memory issues. It says he's a vile person. Oh, I think it's right here. It says, but in his estate shall he honor the God of forces. That means he's going to be a New Ager. And, and Zach Knight is an avid New Ager. The God of forces, a God whom his fathers knew, and not shall he honor with gold and silver and with precious stones and pleasant things. Um, you might say, well, Zach Knight's not the Roman Catholic Pope. So, yeah, but he will be. <laughs> He's going to be the Roman Catholic Pope. And it may happen right after the rapture. Um, you may say, what's the mark of the beast? Here's another thing interesting. The Bible says the mark of the beast is a mark on your forehead and on your right hand. What do Roman Catholics do on Ash Wednesday when they get a black dot that they put on their forehead or that they take from their hand to their forehead huh think about it folks on ash wednesday when you go in to do your uh you know your ceremony for the devil actually you're taking a mark from your hand i don't know i'm not, I'm not a catholic you put it on your forehead i read dr ruckman was a catholic and he's the one who pointed this out i got this from his book mark of the beast highly recommend this book um hey think about it Bible says the mark's going to be on your right hand and your forehead. What do Catholics do on Ash Wednesday? A spot here and a spot there. Huh? Think about it, folks. Okay. 
Dr. Ruckman believes that the Antichrist is going to be Judas Iscariot. And he's got some good points on that. I'm not going to go there right now. And I think he may be right. Judas Iscariot was a, according to the Bible, he was a devil. Okay? So, um, there was one other thing I wanted to bring up. And he's going to make an image. It's probably going to be a computer-generated image. And Zack Knight, we already know, is a computer genius. And with the fact that he's got a number, the Lord's letting us know that the Antichrist is going to be a computer genius. So Dr. Ruckman believes that what's going to happen is when the rapture occurs, and I think this makes sense, too, and he's, he knows the Bible pretty well. Okay, the saints are going to go up. Probably the blood's going to be left behind because the blood is corrupt and flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. The Bible says that. So imagine this. A million or more Christians disappear. They leave their blood behind. And then as soon as they go, who comes? Somebody comes in a flying saucer. He, he comes out of the flying saucer and he says, I am Jesus. Uh, worship me. You might say, oh, you think that's... He says, I can explain to you what happened to all those people who just disappeared. He said, oh, man, you really believe this? Hey, that they're going to have to come up with some explanation, brother. That devil's brilliant. Okay. Here we'll sum it up. His religion will be Roman. This is what Dr. R I, when you read my novel, Silver Skies, I talk about, I patterned the beast after what I read in this book because I felt like what Dr. Ruckman said made sense. I highly recommend you buy his book, by the way. <laughs> it's, uh, I think anybody living in these times need to, needs to know what's in this book. His religion will be Roman Catholicism. And I determined this before I even knew about Zack Knight or even before I knew that Lori McBride was a Roman Catholic agent, which might, might, be, which might explain why they sicked Lori McBride on Brent Spiner, because I knew all this stuff. Two, his nationality will be Syrian Jewish through Ham. His traditions and scriptures are from North Africa. He will profess to be Jesus Christ himself. He'll be in Rome three and a half years as the man of sin. He'll be in Jerusalem three and a half years as the son of perdition. He will be an authority on science and outer space. Go check out Ruckman's book here. He will come peaceably with a kiss for the whole world. He will utilize African, that means like really, really strong rock music for his church services. He will restore Baal worship with sex orgies as part of his service. Interesting. And I like I said, what's, what, what's the copyright on this book? This book is copyright um, 1960. 1960. That was three years after I was born. Notice how many similarities there are in here between what he says and Zach Knight. He will restore Baal worship with sex or Jesus part of the service. Did you know that when Satan resurrected Zach Knight, that's exactly what they were doing? They were having sex orgies. He will completely fool every Catholic and liberal on the earth. He will be connected with the numbers 6 and 13. The cat and words derive from... Oh my God, the cat. Do you realize, do you realize that Lori McBride has got a, a, this thing with having sex with cats? I wonder where that comes from. You say, it's physically impossible for a man to have sex with a cat. Uh, yeah, but they, the Jesuits have got this science now where they can stretch out tissue. And I don't know. The cat and words derived from it will identify his organization. His favorite color is black. Did you know Lori McBride, all she ever wore in the 1990s was black, practically? In fact, me and Brett got on her about that for a while. We were sick. I said, Brett, why don't you tell your, your, your girlfriend to quit wearing black all the time? She's dressing just like a pope. He has a bad right arm and a bad right eye. He will revive the ancient Roman Empire. He will befriend Israel and then turn on them to wipe them out. He will set himself up as God and demand sacrifice to himself. His letter of identification is X. Like I said, this book was published in 1960. Dr. Ruckman gets this from his Bible study. He will heartily approve the revised standard, the revised version 1885, the American Standard Version 1901, the revised standard version 1952, and the next new Bible shortly to be promoted by apostate Protestantism in Rome. That would be the NIV and New American Standard. Good night, dear reader, and sweet dreams. Well, I can already tell you with Zach Knight. I'm not sure about everything on here. Like, I'm not sure if he... Dr. Ruckman might have got some stuff wrong. Like, I'm not sure Zach Knight is from Ham. 
that means he's um they um dr ruckman thinks he might have some you know some black blood i don't know i don't know because when i look at him i don't see that but then maybe he's going to transform himself when he takes on the role of Antichrist and he's going to have a different appearance. I don't know. I, I only know this. I do know that there are some very uncanny similarities between him and what I read here. I, like I said, go get Dr. Ruckman's book. I really recommend you buy this book, folks. Anybody living in this time needs to know about this guy. This is the best book out there on this subject. But we do know he is Roman Catholic. And uh, he, he meets about 80% of what's on this list here. Like I said, this book was published in 1960. Folks, Zach Knight, Jesus told us himself, Zach Knight's the Antichrist. If Jesus says it, then it's so. Like I said, go get this book. Give yourself an education. And don't let that Zach Knight fool you. And, and he's he's getting bolder and bolder with his lies at Crazy Gale Wiki too. Okay, you can't believe a word he's he's and he's sly, man. He's he's putting in enough truth in there to make his lies believe.